What's up guys, Game Fiend, Fiend of All Games here, and we're back with another drama script this Saturday, and you know what we do first now, it's been a new thing since AD, AEW is a thing, we're going to start with ratings, so yeah. here they come, as they usually are, with the text from uh, Bleacher Report, okay, week 20 I believe, week 20, uh, Dynamite got an average of 817, wow, 817,000 K. And NXT finished with 757,000 K. So yet again, um, yet again, AEW, AEW wins. I, I, for, if they don't do anything drastic, like a like in a in a bad way like i don't know if you guys remember like four weeks ago they did a show where it was mostly all story and none of the as majority of those stories didn't go anywhere and they quickly changed them i'll get into with one of them that they directly changed which actually helped out the show in the next in a few minutes but i think out of the 20 weeks Oh, at that point, 16. That was the by far the worst AEW show. It was, it was come, it was completely slow. Um, I remember that show because Joey Janela got a 10-minute live promo. No reason, and it was just more story than wrestling. And I think if if I even if I can remember, there was only three matches. But they've they've fixed it, starting with their their women's division. Uh, Nyla Rose defeated Riho to win the AEW Championship. I'm 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 happy with this because you I don't want to say well you barely saw Rio after she won the title. Maybe you saw her like one or two times, and then they did the Nightmare Family build, which went absolutely nowhere. Like it went nowhere didn't do anything you tried to build up Chris Stan Stan Liner I think that's her name you tried to build up Chris you tried to build up her through challenging the Nightmare family but that really didn't go anywhere but then on the on the side you had you you had the you started on the cruise you started the the Britt Baker and the the Tony segments and those are great i look forward to to tony interviewing Britt baker every wednesday that is one of the highlights to me that's one of one of my favorite spots to look out for it's it's it, it for me it caught on for like they they just like to me it seems like they just they just work good together i don't know about you but i i like i like the brick baker and Tony interview segments, uh, segments of, of AEW. I, I really do, I really do enjoy it. But now we're at the point where, so what's next? Nyla has the title now. I don't think there's any free rematches in AEW. Cause yeah, cause SCU lost the title and they just got their first rematch. So there's no free matches in in um in um AEW. So you do Chris versus Baker here, right? That's that's how I see it. To to book you do you do you do Chris versus versus Baker for the number one contender to to face Nyla Rose at at the the next the next pp the next uh ppb hopefully that's where they they're going because now it's like they're they're going back on track where that whole thing with the nightmare family and this and that it was it was completely completely derailed but nice to see that they're back on track of uh, what else we have we have a lot of well not a lot but we have some wrestling news so apparently Matt Hardy's contract with WWE ends March 1st. 
It was said that WWE had nothing for him, so that's why they did the um, the Carteto shot with Randy Orton against Matt Hardy last week on Raw. Then Vince saw the numbers on that segment. He wants Matt to get his revenge. So now on this Monday coming up, we're gonna get um, V1 Matt Hardy, uh, V1 Matt Hardy versus Randy Orton. And I don't know how far they carry this. Maybe Matt takes you know appearances to to finish out this this story or does it just does it just end next monday so who knows but after march 1st he technically his contract with wwe will be up um edge's contract is limited for limited uh appearances or well not appearances but matches so I think they drag this out till WrestleMania. We get Edge versus Randy Orton, and that's would be kind of odd. Edge and Matt Hardy on the same have the same enemy because we all know what happened between them roughly 15, 16 years ago. More than that, well, we're getting old people. I want to say 18 years ago. So that that would be interesting to see, but I don't think they would do that because obviously because Matt's contract ends on the first. So I guess I guess after this, this is where Edge takes over. I'm assuming Edge gets his revenge on Monday, and then we then we start the 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 WrestleMania build or the Elimination Chamber build because that's the next pay per view after the Superstar Showdown. I'm assuming that's where they go, hopefully, because then they gotta carry it out to WrestleMania. If that's the the end point for this storyline that started at the Royal Rumble, and not to use up however many appearances Edge has for the year. So that's that. Uh, Cena is coming back. Cena will be on the. February 28th edition of SmackDown. So we all knew that Cena was going to come back for WrestleMania, but it looks like he wants to get uh, an early head start. So he'll be back on SmackDown uh, February 28th. That's going to be his first WWE appearance since. Wow, that this is even a good question. I want to say old school Raw. I want to say September, but that doesn't even feel right. But either way, it's been obviously it's been months since we saw Cena in a WWE ring, so it's good to have Cena back. I do not know what WWE has for him, but it's it's always good to see. It's always good to see Cena in the ring. So we have that. Cena's coming back. Matt Hardy's contract ends March 1st. Uh, apparently rumors backstage saying uh, Madrande's title reign as US champion is, is numbered, which would make sense because you can't suspend the guy that has a key mid-card belt on your number one show, which is Raw. Suspend them for 30 days and not make the title vacant. So he indirectly has the title hostage. So I do not know if they make an announcement on Raw to vacate the title because they, like I said, they they can't wait. It's what 12:15 today's day. So they can't wait another three weeks or two and a half weeks to do something with the title because then you have to build to the elimination chamber and if i don't i don't he'll, he'll be back before the elimination chamber but to not have a champion and it's like i'm not it's i know you're gonna say brock was never there but brock wasn't suspended brock was on appearance the Drondes signed full time and he's got suspended and still has the title so you see what I'm getting at? So there's no, there's no full card. There's no mid card title on Raw. 
they I'm pretty they used I'm pretty sure some of those those US title slots has has gone to the 24 7 hour slots slot because usually you'll you'll get the 24 7 title usually passes off air now that there's no US title slot they put it on air and you gotta fill this three hour show with gap it's gonna have gap somehow now that you're not a US champion I just don't know why they didn't just vacate the title and you had a six to eight week build to do a tournament for the US title and you have enough superstars you could even you couldn't need you could you could even bring up on um, NXT people by doing this too speaking of NXT we're going to get to Blazer in a minute um could have brought up NXT people through this mid card title for a shot at the US title and then you could have had that title match at Superstar Showdown would have been perfect but WWE let Drande hold the belt two weeks into his suspension and now it's we're like idle like okay we have a mid card but what are they fighting for the guy that has the belt is suspended so it's like even if they make a number one contenders match they gotta roll with the story that he got DDT onto concrete and he's recovering from injury. Got to go with that story, even though that, we know that's that's just for kayfabe. I don't, I don't know. They should have, they should have, they should have made a tournament. That now would have been like a, you could have had a lengthy six to eight week tournament. You could even, you could, you could even had it skip over Super Showdown. Could have had a match at Super Showdown. Could have had a tournament match at Super Showdown. Or more than one match at for a tournament match at Super Showdown, and have it carry it all the way out to Elimination Chamber, unless they're taking, unless they're going to vacate the title from Adrande and then put the U.S. title on the line in the Elimination Chamber match. All we know is they have. A little bit less than too much to get a US champion before WrestleMania or have a US US match at WrestleMania. But it's it's up to see what WWE does. Those are my ideas, but I'm just a fan that shares his thoughts and opinions on this uh this wrestling industry every week. Uh so about Blazer. So that was crazy so if you guys don't know after Becky beat Asuka for another rematch at Becky's title Blazer comes out beats the crap out of Becky takes out her mouthpiece and vampire bites the holy crap out of the back of Becky's neck and like we all know it was a, like a blood pack, you know, to pop and you know make you know fake blood come out, but it was it was a lot. Like it's 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 a lot. Like if you see Blazer of the photo with, with all the fake blood, it has to be in like black and white. Like that's how much it was. Now how they ruin this whole thing is Becky drives herself to the hospital. Like she Grand Theft Autos the ambulance and drives herself. I don't, I don't get why Becky, even when she got bit, OD hard on the back of the neck, has to still make herself look like a cyborg and drive herself to the hospital in their ambulance to get treatment for her neck. So you had Blazer look come off looking so strong going into this brand new feud and obviously this is her way of getting brought up from NXT to make it to the main roster to have someone that's 
profusely ble bleeding from the back of her neck, refused medical attention only to get into an ambulance to drive to get medical attention. I feel that just that just takes away from what Blazer did because now it's like I bit her to have staples in her the back of her neck, but she whiz Khalifa laughed it off and stole an ambulance and treated herself. Like there's gotta be a time where Becky looks weak and like she looked weak during the fight, but after the fight, she didn't look weak at all. So I'm like, well, how does this look Blazer look? It's like nothing, it's almost like nothing happened. It's like, oh, I beat her, I bit her, bit a chunk of her neck off. And it's like, she just walked away and drove herself to the hospital. So I, well, she, they're not, booked for a title match at Super Showdown. I guess they're gonna build on this for this Monday. Um, we'll see if it gets added to the Showdown card or will they make a build for it all the way up to, to Elimination Chamber. But we'll we'll see. But I'm interested because this means obviously Blazer gets gets called up from NXT to the main roster. So which, which is good. Um, in other news, the Rock's daughter signs her first WWE contract. So she signed a developmental contract at NXT in the Florida Developmental Center. And this is going to be big. Like, if she even has a small fraction of The Rock's charisma, she's gonna go far. Like, she's already gonna get the push because of the family name and her being the first fourth generation superstar so she's already gonna get the push but if she's like like after her two to three years of like training in the defensive if she's like like good good like this could be spectacular like i'm saying like it's gonna be better than flares because flares is just getting pushed down to our throats where no one's gonna no one's starting like i well i didn't like it because the whole thing is her trying to be like daddy. I don't like her, the whole trying to thing be like daddy. If that's the case, let it happen naturally. It seems like every year she goes through like three title reigns and the average title reign only lasts like 60 days, 60 to 90 days, which doesn't, to me, it doesn't do anything. It's just adding a number. So it's like you're forcing her to catch up to daddy extremely fast. It took Ric Flair over 30 years 20 to 30, 25 to 30 years to get all those title reigns. And Charlotte has all those, all these title reigns in seven, seven to eight years. So it's like they really forced Flair, especially the past three years, forced Flair's title reigns down our throats, which I don't, I don't really, I don't really like it, but yeah. Oh, and uh, Jeff Cobb is, Jeff Cobb is apparently doing appearance based stuff with uh, AEW, which that that was surprising. We got the announcement that Jeff Cobb was going to face John Moxley next Wednesday night, only for him to already be there as a hired gun to help beat up Moxley, which that was that was that was surprising. So apparently he's doing by contract appearances he's not signed he's just doing whatever you know just like a hitman which makes sense to have him scripted like that but um yeah so he just so he'll be he'll be on next he obviously he was there this week he'll be on next week to face Noxie. after that we don't know and AEW is still trying to get a partnership with our both RRH and New Japan Wrestling which, I mean, they already have, I want to say, a good relationship because Jon Moxley still wrestles in New Japan Wrestling, and so does Chris Jericho still wrestles in New Japan Wrestling. So they're allowing AEW superstars to wrestle on their shows. And then um, they AEW wants to get a partnership with ROH, but we don't know if that's going to happen. 
I mean, they already technically have a plant with Marty Scroll getting that huge promotion and being in charge of um, the bookkeeping over at ROH. But now it's like the the AEW and ROH, you know, coming together and working together. I guess that part is out of Marty's hands. He's just apparently he's in charge of booking. So we'll see if that happens. That would be interesting because then we could get a real a real superstar showdown. A, a AEW, ROH, and New Japan wrestling show. We already got a ROH and New Japan wrestling show. So now we could add AEW. That, that would be that would be crazy. But that's gonna wrap this up for this week's Drama Script Saturday. Remember there's a Drama Script Saturday every Saturday. And if you like what you have witnessed, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'm Game Fee Games. And I'm out of here. Later and peace.